I, I told the Prime Minister Timoshenko that the last time we had this much energy in the room, it was Bill Gates who was here. But that was only because that was because of his money. You know, there was this much excitement. Welcome. Thank you, all of you, for coming. I'm delighted that you're here. Uh, it's a uh, it's a great opportunity for CSIS that you would uh, that we would have Yulia Timoshenko, Dr. Timoshenko, uh, to join us today to uh, discuss with us to discuss with us the um, uh, the situation in Ukraine and frankly in Russia. I think that this is going to be a, a very important discussion that all of us, uh, frankly, are going to benefit from, and we need to hear. Um, Dr. Timoshenko, of course, is a uh, towering figure in Ukraine. Um, I had one person one time told me that uh, Margaret Thatcher is the Yulia Timoshenko of the United Kingdom. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, it gives you a sense of her prominence and importance in the landscape of Ukraine uh, and, frankly, throughout Europe. And we're really delighted that she's here today. It's a great opportunity for us. She is a, uh, a, a talented uh, businesswoman, a very successful politician. She now heads the largest political bloc in opposition in the country, but she is working very constructively for this new Ukraine. And I think it's most important to say that uh, the Orange Revolution did not stop two years ago. It continues, but it continues in a much deeper and more sophisticated way. And we're going to hear that today. Uh, Dr. Timoshenko, thank you. We're honored that you would come. We turn the stage to you. We're very pleased that you could join us here in CSIS here on uh, this day. Thank you. Good day, and first of all, I would like to praise Dr. Hamri for giving me this unique opportunity to talk with this audience. I also would like to greet Ambassador Shamshur in the United States. I also greet all ambassadors who worked in Ukraine, Miller, Pfeiffer, as well as all other uh, distinguished uh, guests who came to this room to listen to what's happening in Ukraine and how Ukraine works and uh, builds its democra democracy after Orange Revolution. First of all, I probably will start that I know that uh, after Orange Revolution events, Ukraine was the brightest hope for the whole region in a development of democracy in post-Soviet uh, area and all areas that are related to security, energy security in the region in general. I know that in the whole world, Ukraine is uh, uh, looked at with some questions. What is happening in Ukraine? What is going there? Uh, it is the destruction of uh, expectations. Uh, is it somehow a stop, or it's its own in its own way the movement to, uh, uh, forward? And not only our friends outside of Ukraine try to answer these questions, but even Ukrainians are trying to look for answers to for an answer to this question. I would like to tell you about my subjective uh, thoughts uh, of a person who lives and works in the heart of Ukraine and in this way has the right to have her own opinion. First of all, Orange Revolution, uh, first honest presidential election in Ukraine, changed Ukraine positively forever. And regardless of what people say today and do, Ukraine is different, and even through complications, difficulties, struggle that continues, we will continue moving forward, only forward, and even those who want to step backwards, we will not allow to do this in a democratic manner. What we got today, and do we have, uh, and what we are proud of today, First of all, uh, we monopoly, uh, single
single party system is destructed in Ukraine after presidential election, we see that we have political competition in Ukraine, a real one. We have government, we have an opposition. Government can uh, work uh, logically or not logically, in, like in any other country. Opposition is always looking closely to the acts of government. Competition is in the country and it is a part of democracy. The second thing that we received and probably will not allow to change is the real freedom of speech in Ukraine. I myself, as a person who did not, who was not allowed uh, during the previous presidential election to speak on a single TV channel in Ukraine, I have an opportunity to express my opinion on all channels of Ukraine, all newspapers. Maybe it's not perfect, but pol politics, uh, people will, uh, politi politicians will never like how mass media works, but nevertheless, we are moving forward in this regard. Uh, it's my pleasure to see how some positions in the Supreme Rada, uh, even when we have two political parts, that is uh, government and opposition, we we're able to vote on many drafts of laws, specifically on WTO uh, accession. We also voted on issues of uh, judicial reforms in Ukraine. And uh, we can uh, give a long list of issues important for Ukraine, which are reviewed and by Verkhovna Rada today in Ukraine and have consensus. We, as opposition, are trying trying to work on important issues for Ukraine constructively and work uh, together with the government sometimes. Nevertheless, probably, I would be not honest completely if I would say that Ukraine doesn't have challenges today, challenges that are just as risky as they were before Orange Revolution and before parliamentary elections. And when I am going to speak today about, to, about today's challenges, I will talk not only in the content of Ukraine's problems, but also I would like you to get a sense that everything that is going in Ukraine affects the whole region, the work world, changes that region and creates positive movement forward or some uh, problems that can, be, uh, can obstruct uh, these uh, movement, even if we are talking about post-Soviet space. I don't want to see Ukraine or many other countries that uh, became independent and uh, left the Soviet Union would be called post-Soviet spaces. I would like to put an end to this as soon as possible and get independent, democratic, and de de dynamic in its development to see those countries. As to challenges, I believe that they are related to the fact that after the Orange Revolution, we were not, uh, uh, the, the democratic team was not able to stay at power with the, the uh, government that had very clear uh, directions of the development for Ukraine. First of all, this is European integration, Euro-Atlantic uh, integration, reforms in Ukraine, that's number two, or uh, reforms that lead to the fact that uh, Ukraine have to have uh, norms and rules of life that are typical for the whole Europe. This team was not able to stay at power, and today uh, I believe it's too late to review the mistakes or try to find out the mistakes maybe it's not even productive. I believe that we have to uh, identify that uh, to, to, uh, uh, just like we were not able to uh, evaluate the forces that we inherited from the Soviet Union, we were not able to evaluate their strengths and financial opportunities. On the other hand, there were also mistakes, but this is our, these are our lessons and we need to move forward, not stopping in some retrospectives.
Today we have the next picture in Ukraine. We have constitutional reforms, constitutional reform which uh, gave uh, power to two political forces. They are not harmonized in their work in constitutional space. Two forces, President of Ukraine and Prime Minister of Ukraine, they have absolutely different political teams, but they at the same time have power given by people with different strengths strategies with different opposite, opposite uh, concepts about Ukraine's development, but today this is the result to, of changes to constitution that we have. It is not possible to have two teams at power with different projects, with different uh, uh, views. A lot of people say that this was uh, absence of way out during the presidential election, and without this, uh, we, we were able to do we, we, we were able to uh, have Yushchenko as a president. We, I'm not, I do not share this point of view, even though this is just my point of view. I believe that constitutional reform uh, brought to majority results that we have today in Ukraine. After parliamentary elections, just after presidential elections, Ukraine, people of Ukraine supported democratic forces. There was no other alternative in different format, in different package. They voted differently, but uh, just like majority voted for president and European choice, uh, the same happened uh, during parliamentary election, that majority didn't change regardless of some disappointments. And this inspires us and this convinces us that Ukraine uh, will not change change it, its course. Politicians sometimes uh, un, are unpredicted, and majority in, pre in parliamentary elections, uh, in parliament, uh, we, we uh, created the majority, which is not natural for the country, but pre President tried to do as best as he could to balance somehow in new uh, parliament two courses, two concepts, two strategies for Ukraine's development, and you knew you know that a uh, universal of national unity was signed and uh, Yanukovych was uh, a candidate for prime minister's uh, uh, title job. And after that, we got the problem that is related to uh, absolutely uh, different positions of two par parties and uh, different strategies carried out by, on the one hand, president, and on the other hand, by prime minister. Today, president um, made a next uh, uh, statement that the team of Yanukovych violated all uh, all issues of uh, this agreement. Um, President finally um, made his point, understanding the difficulty of the country's situation. We, as opposition, supported President. We started to renew the trust between two teams, presidential and ours, and last Saturday we signed an agreement about unity of democratic forces, and we hope that today democratic forces uh, rethought about a lot of parts of our work, our cooperation, and today we are on the course of stabilization around president, opposition, and everybody who is ready to support president. And once again, I would like to say that today, I being a leader of the largest bloc in parliament, I'm ready to support president and ready to make sure that the strategy of Ukraine will not change. Now, about real challenges that I cannot not mention, that is not possible not to mention, and I will refer to acts and statement of the government, Yanukovych government, and something that is of our concern today. Understanding that Ukraine is a part of a region and all problems and issues that are related to the development of Ukraine, protection of its independence, protections of its, um, uh, energy independence, energy security, all of these issues have to be viewed in the content of 
of regional energy security. I cannot view Ukraine in any other way. This is the element of stability of the whole region. And that is why lately I was very much surprised that Putin stated that he, together with our Ukraine's government, starts a new um, era in uh, unity or energy unity, which starts to tr with transfer of our uh, gas pipeline to Russia. And uh, on the other hand, uh, Ukraine will have the right to explore gas fields in Russian in the Russian Federation. And I, we know that uh, this statement of uh, any other person person about this, uh, the uh, uh, gas in Ukraine. The world has similar position. For example, uh, uh, there were some fiascos of gas exploration in Russia by other countries and uh, companies, uh, non-Russian companies. We understand that this is actually a step for uh, absorption of um, energy uh, in Ukraine because uh, the official leader of the Russian Federation cannot state something like that in vain. We saw that it was supported by our Prime Minister, Minister of Fuel and Energy, Vice President of Ukraine's government, and the process actually started. Uh, with great uh, efforts, we were able to stop this process with passing a special um, uh, law that does not allow to touch our pipeline infrastructure and uh, change it in this manner. We were just able to stop this process. There was another statement, and again, the statement was sounded was sound from pos uh, from officials of Russia and Ukraine that all our distribution gas pipeline and system is transferred to Russia. And actually, that uh, there will be an agreement signed, and when. And we were able to review and assess this situation. We saw that we we have the same Ros Ukra Energo company behind that, the same company that actually uh, 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 changed our, our agreements with Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Russia about long-term gas supply. We understood that political project of gasification of politics continues in reality, and we believe that this is not a guess. This is actually a violation of political sovereignty of Ukraine. The next step that was made lately and, uh, and which was mentioned in the most uh, analytical newspapers in Ukraine, that the same line, the same line, Ros Ukr Energo, uh, Today we see that we transfer the generation of energy and uh, also transfer uh, transportation of uh, um, energy with the companies that are affiliated with Rosokonera to West. And then we are talking about distribution of electricity, of Ukrainian electricity, with the, um, the use of companies associated with Rosokonera. Then there were other statements that were part of this chain. We are talking about joint and common uh, efforts of Russian and Ukrainian government to uh, explore our, our uranium, uh, uranium fields um, and also um, use uranium for peaceful purposes. What is this? Movement to the diversification or movement to independence, energy independence of Ukraine? Is, it, is this the strengthening of our political sovereignty? Technically, no. I can say that being a leader of opposition uh, political force, uh, yes, I can organize and make some steps to prevent these things, but I will never be able to change the main pipe, uh, the main line of the official politics of Ukraine. This is an official politics with all instruments and institutions. And uh, to change uh, manually this politics say in the format of opposition is utopia. In this case, we, Ukraine needs to understand, because its society has to understand whether Ukraine needs this kind of politics today. 
but the situation doesn't stop here. The next challenge that comes right behind the practical attacks on the opportunities of uh, energy diversification in Ukraine, and uh, which is which also is a result uh, will will result for the European Union. We have new program and a new statement that a few days ago were made by Vice President, uh, Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Azarov said, Ukrainian government made a decision that it is, Im Im it is needed to activ activate the work to have single economic space or zone. In life and in politics, I always believed that I was an optimist. And I do not believe that today, after uh, Ukraine passed all this hardship with uh, improvement of independence, we can somehow restore the former Soviet Union, even if it's softly called a single economic zone. I, being an optimist, do not believe that the these statements do not have any some any uh, systematic politics behind it. I would like to remind to all of us that single economic zone is not only a free trade zone. This is actually the development of super governmental agency that gets uh, part of uh, sovereignty for Ukraine. And this is the establishment that makes decision on all issues, starting with a financial, monetary, customs uh, uh, policy. And in that case, Ukraine will have only 11 percent of vote in making decisions and Russian the Russian Federation will have more than 80 percent in the process of making decision. I would like to ask, is this the future that we were standing for in during for, uh, Orange Revolution or uh, the future that a real citizen of our country dreamed of, the that uh, those who fight, fought for freedom? And there was no document about protocols uh, uh, signed um, signed about this zone, there is no need to ratify in Parliament. The Parliament is behind this process, outside of this process, because the last thing that the Kuchma did, he ratified together with Yanukovych and Azaro about uh, all these documents in Parliament. We have a question. How can we influence and affect this inadequate politics of the government, which is in opposition to presidential politics and at the same time in contradiction with our politics, regardless of the fact that we have over 50 percent of supporters who support Ukraine's movement towards Europe and further from um, emperor, empire, emperor, further from um, imperial forces. And we have uh, people who support uh, a lot of issues in Ukraine, uh, the last of things, uh, the last of support of uh, energy independence and proce procedures that are related to a single economic zone. I would like to ask how, how to stop this process? What are the matter, manners to do? How, how we can do that? What the president does today and his team, we try through uh, veto, presidential veto. We are trying through public position and the public statement about uh, uh, this poli politics. We are trying to work through uh, difficult procedures in Parliament to prevent these things, and we are trying to do some things. But nevertheless, the, today's risks are. We have much more risks today than we can even imagine. I would love to come to you today and and talk to you nicely that everything is fine. We are dealing with all the processes. We are moving uh, uh, based on the course that we s stated. But that would be nice. But uh, we will not deviate from this course. We are uniting the democratic forces. And Ukraine is moving forward positively. But I would like to attract your attention once again that there are there is a different plan. For example, reform of constitution that is stated in Ukraine.
Regarding practically uh, second round of the president with regard to the changes in constitution, you know that plan. This plan is already uh, in Verkhovna Rada, and uh, the a bill uh, is registered, so it will eliminate from president the last powers and from the uh, uh, presidential uh, fourth uh, public election, it will be just uh, parliament who can decide. And every day in parliament, we have the attack on the deputies of the democratic factions and practically slowly uh, transfer from the deputies of the uh, democratic uh, coalitions to the power coalition, which is um, headed by uh, Yanukovych. So I have to tell you that uh, one step that still we have, so Yanukovych, based on the constant um, uh, usurpation of his power, will receive 301 void as a constitutional majority. Then, in that case, the presidential veto will have no power whatsoever. We can have any changes to the Constitution. Uh, then the new law on uh, domestic and foreign policy will be reality without uh, uh, veto, uh, veto, and um, telling you the truth, uh, in this background we have also uh, energetic adaptation, adaptation of Ukraine as well as adaptation of the single economic space of Ukraine. And I am not uh, um, making this cause more troublesome. I'm just uh, telling you that if we're going just contemplate this procedure, we can wake up in the morning and see that we, all of us, are members of a single economic space. I really envy Poland. I envy today and other countries that can have domestic um, uh, discussions regarding the policies. They can have changes in political forces within the country, but never they would wake up in the morning and be a part of the new configuration of a new Soviet Union. We are different here. And uh, my dear friends, I would like to pay your attention uh, to that fact that we have dreamt that Ukraine would be a flagman in our region to unite those post-Soviet countries that see uh, their way a democratic way. Uh, Georgia, Moldova, even uh, nowadays, I would like like you to uh, pay attention to Belarus that have stated that they will not change uh, their independence toward the energy preferences. So in that case, instead of um, um, help uh, Belarus and uh, help her out to be more closer to democratic uh, countries, practically we lack the possibility to do that. And uh, we have Ukraine even uh, says that it's wrong that Belarus makes a statement. Also, I would like to mention that uh, Georgia feels unprotected. Uh, I have to tell you that in the Transdniester region, we have back all policies of the previous uh, policy. So instead of being a part of the unique policy management, so we all be a factor, Ukraine will be a factor to influence um, the uh, contemplation of this conflict in Ukraine. Whatever we do, we practically making the conflicts worse, and we putting this country into the corner where it's very difficult to find a way out. With regard to the energy security, I have to tell you about three projects that as minimum nowadays uh, are today in its stagnation period. First project that we have seen the way out for European Union and for Ukraine with regard to the diversification of uh, gas deliveries, it was to unite the resources of the natural gas in the entire region of Kazakhstan to Turkmenistan and built through the Caspian Sea, uh, Georgia and Ukraine, uh, trunk gas pipeline that would be a diverse uh, resource for Ukraine and for Europe. Nowadays, we have to put a huge fat cross on it. Why? Because Russia is planning nowadays to uh, deploy the blue stream, make it uh, stronger, and uh, with doing that, uh, practically strike all the diversification. Is it better for Ukraine and uh, Europe? I am not sure about it. The second project that practically uh, also is finishing up today, that's the pro uh, project of diversification of nuclear uh, fuel for Ukraine and its adaptation 
uh, of more uh, sources besides Russians as the fuel for Ukraine, because Russia are uh, um, uh, trying to take out the um, uranium fields uh, in Ukraine to make it its monopoly, so we would not have even this little source of uh, energy and uh, do this with Europe. Even, for example, we have a wonderful product with American company Westinghouse. Practically, all this is crossed out. That's the second program that they don't allow to develop. The third program, it also is diminishing, that's the exploration and production of um, energy sources in Ukraine and the offshores of um, uh, Black and Azov Sea. Those companies who want bids and they try uh, not to produce, but to uh, start to prepare for this alternative sources of energy sources uh, practically nowadays are because we do have this possibility but they're trying to find out every possible way to close down these projects and to invite the companies that would be monopolies uh, under the influence of the russian federation on ukraine's territory but i i don't want even to mention tens and tens of small uh, projects that also are moving in the same directions uh, to, for ukraine to be more dependent on russian energy resources. Logically, it would be practically um, make some um, uh, a statement what to do in this situation. Uh, really, we have three ways how to develop uh, our realities. All this way could be real. You cannot say that everything in unison today is set up and uh, there is no doubts how uh, and what would be the way uh, to develop Ukraine's future. First way, it could be a negotiation process between the president, prime minister, uh, uh, try to stop all negative tendencies that put in danger the sovereignty of Ukrainian uh, nation and are danger to the diversification of energy sources, practically danger to the energy uh, security of Ukraine, all on the level of negotiations. Also, with help of those countries that are immediately interested in that region, so uh, that this uh, region would be healthier and not uh, uh, next energy monopoly. But this process is uh, now under the danger um, of risk of failure. The president um, stated that the dialogue practically impossible, that uh, that's failure to comply with the provisions of the universal. Uh, the uh, team of Prime Minister Yanukovych stated yesterday that they would like to have the pre-term presidential elections, maybe at the same time with the parliamentary elections, parliament elections. On the other hand, uh, party of regions and Prime Minister of Ukraine have blocked completely to um, nominate the uh, uh, foreign minister of Ukraine. Uh, so uh, for this way uh, prohibited the president to have his choice and to form the foreign policy of Ukraine. All institutional forces, uh, uh, with exception of uh, security service of Ukraine, are nowadays in the hands of one political party. That practically is the political party of uh, the prime minister, and uh, the uh, positions are filled out uh, per, with the person from the same region, Donetsk region. 90% of the uh, officials in the government are from the same region. This process uh, we see um, every day. And even though the uh, world's uh, community, president, and democratic team uh, have uh, put the major force on their hand to stop uh, this um, movement to one losing the sovereignty and, uh, of independence uh, of Ukrainian uh, energy uh, security, uh, nowadays this process uh, undergoes tremendous crisis. Uh, the second process of development is on, based on the uh, um, daily procedures, practically uh, the presidential powers are taken away from him. He is the only uh, person in our government that is to agree with the 
NATO movement of Ukraine, the only one. So now his uh, powers are eliminating every day, less and less. So remember that uh, we can see the day that no president, no democratic power in the parliament, that after uh, they um, amount will not be 150 blocking voices to prevent, to adopt some key uh, laws. It can happen. So also this uh, can lead to the way that president and democratic uh, forces will be those that party of region is proposing now dies uh, now uh, headed by prime minister yanukovych and the third and uh, first of all first two uh, projects uh, cannot be good for the political stabi stability uh, of our ukraine maybe that's the in most important part for us political stability for ukraine if it's going to be achieved it will form later on um, a, the series of positive consequences as in the economic sector, including investment policy, also in uh, policy uh, space, uh, including Ukraine as the partner of uh, any euro political projects. That's why first two um, projects, unfortunately, they are uh, an opponent. Uh, and this opposition uh, is because of the problem with constitution we have and also a, vect uh, a multi vectoral that we have today, different power forces. And the last way, last way is, please do not think that um, that's uh, something that our political force sees in some absolute way. That's one of the three ways that has right to live. That's a possibility to uh, find out uh, the legal um, consequences, not through the revolution, but uh, through the preterm parliament election. Uh, at the same time to uh, adopt new constitution that uh, may uh, eliminate this constitutional conflict that we see today in Ukraine. This could be the way that once can force us again go for the election and democratic forces are not afraid of this uh, election because uh, Ukrainian society understand that democratic leaders leader will have the majority uh, what would be the vote in for, uh, favor of the democratic uh, forces? How many uh, uh, place democratic forces will win? We will not discuss about this. The most important thing that all together they will be majority. If we have um, frank, uh, transparent election and the coalition will be formed uh, in a frank manner. Pre-term election, that's not a normal procedure. That's practically half price uh, uh, process. It can be a sanation of our society. It could uh, eliminate the old strategy and uh, make Ukraine to move in the uh, new strategic uh, space. And uh, talking about the pre-term elections, also I would like uh, you to remember the number that we did not state. This number was uh, cited by Freedom House based on the deep uh, political sociological polling that only 25% from those people that have voted in favor of party of region now are in favor of um, Yanukovych administration. That's an official um, a number that was uh, published and it's uh, well known. Uh, this is uh, the statement that practically stability uh, is not uh, typical for this uh, not natural uh, political force that is leader today in forming of Ukrainians position as in the domestic policy reforms um, as well as in our euro political steps and our geopolitical um, constructions. In my opinion, the only thing that we have no right to, we do not have right uh, now to rest on laurels. We do not have time to relax and think that we have won. The Orange Revolution gave us uh, this freedom. I have to tell you that Orange Revolution has opened only the way. It has demonstrated the uh, will of the society. At the same time, it has demonstrated that our people, our nation is much stronger than politician. This is what Orange Revolution has demonstrated to us. And it proclaimed 
Ukraine that it will not allow more to move in any other direction, only into strategic direction, even though politicians will try to do so. But to move ahead after the door was open, politicians have to do that. They have to find the uh, wisdom to unite. They have to find tolerance uh, to find out the ways. They even don't appeal to the people. They uh, decided in the legal uh, ways and they are obligated to uh, adopt the reforms that will move Ukraine into the European uh, unity and the best way uh, would be uh, to make this way uh, faster. And me being a leader of one of opposition forces, I am in favor of this and our team with president is in favor of uh, this and we can uh, accept the consequences and we are able to move forward. The only thing we are asking the world uh, community, understand us deeply. And also if uh, some mistakes are committed, uh, not to make these mistakes, key mistakes in analyzing our situation, but to help us open the possibility to support Ukraine, to clean uh, this crisis that we are surviving right now. And always it is nice for me to read the signing uh, of uh, famous people that say that uh, policy, I'm sorry, uh, democracy is like a rising tide. It's, uh, we have tide and we have ebb, but it doesn't depend uh, and only requires to come back with greater force and democracy will be built. So um, independently of the fact that it's very difficult in Ukraine right now, but I want you to know that Ukraine has to know we uh, have to be the um, hope of the world, the hope that we'll be complying with everything what we have to do and what the world community expects from us. Thank you very much for your attention. I think uh, that this is uh, also important that Ukraine for you also, also is the uh, greatest hope and I am very happy that you are support my opinion about Ukraine. Uh, right now, if you have some questions, I am ready to answer them. Thank you very much, Madam Prime Minister. Uh, I would first like to tell you that uh, there were over a hundred people that we had to turn away uh, from the conference here. We didn't have room for them. And I think more than a hundred. The second thing I'd like to do before we go to the question period is introduce, uh, let you know that Dr. Grigory Nemiria, who is sitting here on the stand, uh, is the deputy leader of the party. He's uh, also a member of the RADA and a very influential foreign, poli foreign policy analyst in Ukraine. I've known him for some time now, and when he was a, a think tanker and he's head of the Center for European and International Studies, so in his own right, uh, deserves to be up here and to speak. But what I'd like to do now is open it up. We have, uh, we have some time, some good, uh, over half an hour for, for questions. Those of you, if you'd raise your hand and I'll recognize you, please state the, uh, who you are and what your affiliation is uh, to begin with. First here and then over here. There's a microphone. Wait for the microphone, please. Uh, this is your first visit to the United States uh, in 10 years. You've been a frequent visitor to Moscow, to European capitals, even last year. Uh, you promised uh, to, uh, you pledged to visit uh, Tehran, uh, but you've been conspicuously absent um, uh, in Washington. And some say that uh, the reason you hadn't crossed uh, the U.S. border in the last 10 years was because you were concerned uh, about being detained uh, or even uh, taken uh, or asked to testify uh, in the uh, case of your former business partner and political ally, uh, Pavlo Lazarenko. Pavlo Lazarenko, as we all know, uh, has been uh, in jail in San Francisco for the last eight years, uh, convicted of money laundering and other crimes. Uh, so uh, my question to you is, uh, could you comment uh, whether, this, uh, whether you had such concerns? Uh, could you comment on the extent of your cooperation with U.S. law enforcement? And most importantly, uh, could you tell us now whether you have any remorse uh, 
uh, about your work with Pablo Lazarenko in the past. Thank you. Шановні друзі, я думаю, моя присутність сьогодні в Сполучених Штатах і, власне, абсолютно спокійна наша розмова. I know that you have prepared for my uh, meeting, but dear friends, uh, I have to disappoint you. Everything is okay uh, with us. We do not have any relation to these things that you just have mentioned. Um, my name is uh, Vadim Gorbach, I'm an independent family. You described in very um, sharp tones the um, uh, dangers that Ukraine, Ukraine faces uh, today in terms of its uh, uh, you know, democratic uh, development and um, even sovereignty. Uh, but uh, you know, somehow you, you forgot to mention the, um, the most uh, significant uh, victory of uh, Viktor Yanukovych since, uh, you know, since he assumed the post of the prime minister, that uh, your faction in parliament uh, supported uh, a vote for the um, law for cabinet ministers, which basically stripped most of the um, president's powers. In, and you did that in exchange for um, the law on uh, imperative mandate for uh, local, uh, uh, for local, uh, uh, for local councils. Uh, you also said that in the future you are going to support um, the law for imperative mandate for Verkhovna Rada. And, you know, as most people here probably would uh, testify, this, you know, this law had been condemned uh, throughout the world as, an, as anti-democratic. And the third thing, uh, you devote most of your rhetoric in Ukraine, um, if, if, not most, if not most, and you know, at least a great part, to um, the issue of uh, Tariffs, energy so we, tariffs. Can we keep our questions short and okay. instead of making statements, please so ask questions. Basically, uh, basically in, in terms of tariffs, in, in, uh, for about 4% of Ukrainian budget today is uh, spent on uh, subsidizing energy. This, this is a very significant number, for example, in, in relation to uh, spending on education. And um, uh, the energy tariffs in Ukraine have not grown since uh, 1999. No, they've been they've been uh, they've been under revision uh, lately. Um, so, what's what's your strategy uh, in terms of uh, you know liberalizing uh, energy markets? Yeah. Sorry for one question. First of all, after the changes to the constitution were adopted, that practically uh, has. Uh, uh, change the uh, um, function between the president and prime minister and practically uh, it was in favor of the prime minister of the parliamentary republic uh, making the president of the um, Ukraine uh, figure that has practical limitations in forming policies of Ukraine. That was voting regarding the constitution reform. I would like to remind you that our faction and uh, personally myself I was the only political force in uh, Verkhovna Rada that did not not vote that practically uh, uh, man-made we would uh, change the constitution and uh, make the mechanism for the revenge practically change the constitution it was not the revitalization of Ukraine it's practically to uh, set back uh, the and give uh, influence for the old uh, forces in the policy they were against the Orange Revolution practically all officials that working under Kuchma are back in the government you cannot find even one person that's not back in the government and doesn't do the same thing that 
that they have done before Orange Revolution. That's fact nowadays. Talking about the law on Cabinet of Ministers, that's a law that uh, uh, many times was declared by President Verkhovna uh, Rada uh, government as a law that uh, uh, separates the powers uh, as per constitution between the President and Prime Minister. We as an opposition force had to choose to give a chance uh, to regulate this conflict between the presidential and government um, chain in the government, try to do it as uh, the law prescribes, because the law has separated it. It's better have a, a, a bad policy and no policy at all, but lack of any policy at all gave the opportunity to uh, Yanukovych and his team much more powers than uh, uh, the law on cabinet of ministers has taken away from him. From the two uh, worst things, we have uh, really chosen the less evil uh, and practically we didn't want any flowers, but the law um, when uh, it was adopted, we do not have any um, uh, differences uh, between two um, government branches in this issue. So we think that we have uh, uh, made a right choice. As to the imperative mandate, that's very important issue in Ukraine, because imperative mandate, that's a right on the highest organ of the party of bloc. Uh, the convention, telling the truth, of those deputies that uh, have switched from one political team to another, and in this case uh, from um, democratic forces to anti-crisis uh, coalition of Yanukovych. So uh, through way of convection, take away this mandate from, mandate from them. I have to tell you that Ukraine does a nascent democracy, uh, all democratic institutions in Ukraine, and uh, at the same time also some elements of the traditions are just nascent in Ukraine in political way. But you know, when you do not have a, a stable uh, tradition, a stable relation in the political sector, we have to have in place some law. Unfortunately, nowadays, in such a short period of time, we do not have a party and the classic understanding standing of the world, we have the leadership parties that uh, we do not have stable teams in those parties. And unfortunately, uh, during short period of time when these parties were formed, not all members are really um, clean members in each party. Besides that, Ukraine has uh, temporarily stopped after all this uh, things that happened to get a revenge uh, stopped all this. On the other hand, a, a great amount of money were uh, given to the politics, and this money uh, complied with the function that the, function that the money uh, should not do. Unfortunately, this money are not used for business in parliament. That's why, unfortunately, that's why every day we have a, p a pressure on deputies of the democratic parties, uh, pressures on small businesses, pressure on the uh, corruption uh, propositions. And nowadays, the only thing that we can do to protect uh, temporality, the Ukraine's polity, uh, from um, not very logical uh, steps of politics, that's uh, irresponsibility of the politician uh, for this his political party orientation. When uh, he changed his political political orientation uh, for the independent of the causes, please give up your mandate. Yes, this procedure cannot be used for all entirety in Ukraine, maybe for five years, for maybe for ten years, but temporality, temporality, so we have opportunity to strengthen the parties, to strengthen our tradition, and to have an opportunity not to change uh, many people after uh, some uh, deputies were attracted to work in some other political forces. And moreover, uh, now in constitutional courts, uh, it's the, the, the topic of the imperative mandate is under contemplation. It could be adopted, could not be adopted. So if that will not be adopted by the constitution um, uh, court, I am uh, risking saying that since we have a majority in constitution, uh, we will have the majority in uh, uh, Yanukovych side more. So that's why we are practically uh, fighting now for uh, Ukrainians' independence from its democratic choice. Uh, we have to use sometimes political mechanisms that are not used in the developed democratic uh, countries, but it's the only opportunity in the nascent democracies. 
As to tariffs, I will not spend too much time for this. In the basis of tariffs, that is rates, all of them, about 60% is the cost of gas. Ukraine, dear friends, was put not only on knees, but uh, it, there are forces that try to destroy Ukraine uh, entirely through increasing this price by a factor of my high factor that uh, destroys the budget, the local budget, the budget of the country. And today we have the uh, results of access of Rosuk Energo to our market and all our, the, the results of our agreement. And each person in Ukraine is a victim of this gas aggression, gas terrorism that Ukraine for the past two years sees in its course. It is very unpleasant to say that both government led uh, us to this situation, but we will try to protect us, ourselves as much as we can. How do we do it? Today, we are trying quickly to go through all procedures of energy saving and energy conservation. We are changing from natural gas to coal, uh, other alternative fuel resources in order to get rid of this dependence. It's too bad it was not done 15 years ago, and now we have to do it fast uh, with uh, destroying Ukraine's economy. You're right. We have uh, much higher inflation today than it was predicted. Low lower uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, product uh, production because we have inadequate influence on the gas price that we didn't expect in our economical models. Andrei Bihun, Washington Group. Andrei Bihun from Washington Group, former diplomat. Miss Yulia, if you can say about your third way, we hope that we will move um, in that third way. Uh, what a kind of obstacles can be predicted, uh, serious uh, uh, barriers that coalition could uh, do or, or uh, newly combined democratic forces, will they, they will have to overcome these challenges and obstacles. Yes, I understand what you are talking about. You are saying about third way, uh, early election. You are talking about early uh, election, legal election. This is the um, hottest, the, the, uh, the, the best way to protect Ukraine today. I agree with you, and I am viewed as a person who, can, who is able to make revolutions, but in reality, I am a very calm person in life, and it is much better for me to move legally forward in order to try to uh, move Ukraine to uh, meetings and Maidans. That is why I believe that this is an adequate uh, uh, way, early parliamentary election. F what do we need for that? We need to have a very clear legal framework. Our political forces uh, applied, appealed to constitutional court to explain to us whether we, whether, whether the president has these kind of basis. And we gave our arguments to the constitutional courts and we believe that there is basis for that. We are waiting for the decision of the constitutional court. After that, the presidential order, uh, executive order has to be done and then early election. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid that the Party of Regions s said many times that they will not obey to the decision of President, the decision of the Constitutional Court. They will not obey uh, any democratic decisions or procedures if it will be a threat for them to lose their power. I believe that uh, no government in the world would 
take a risk and make that statement that they will disobey the courts, the Constitution Court's decision, except for Ukrainian one. They said that we are different. We are not the same people as we, you saw us in 2005. Don't expect us to give away power as fast as we did it in 2004 and 5. This is their official position you can read on the Internet. And what is important here, the Constitutional Court of any country is practically the last resort for interpretation of Constitution. And if we have this kind of decision, and the presidential decree will be there and the procedure will be established. We expect that the democratic world will support us in order to see that nobody will throw the words like that, that we will disobey the decision of the constitutional court or presidential decree. We would like to see that in, if there will be need uh, legal uh, uh, opportunities and legal ways uh, will explain to Ukraine, all the forces of the world will explain to Ukraine that these steps, that people have to be responsible and include these issues. And that is why we are moving towards this direction. We see the only way out in this manner. And we are disturbed and uh, concerned uh, seeing what is going on today in uh, uh, problems that is related to the independence of Ukraine. As long as we are there having some position in politics, we will try our best to protect Ukraine, protect with all our efforts. Steve Larrabee. Follows up your last remarks. What would be the legal basis for dissolving the parliament and holding early elections? Sorry for the short question. <laughs> yeah, answering to you, I'd like to say once again uh, what uh, arguments we stated to the Constitutional Court, but I'll be brief. In reality, the Constitution includes two options for the president to announce early election. First, if during the 30 days there is no legitimate coalition majority in parliament, and second, 60 days from the time of loss of legitimate, legitimate there is no legitimate government established. Those are two reasons. But in reality, we have a whole uh, array of laws that were violated by both pr prime minister and officials when they were members of Verkhovna Rada and later became prime ministers and, and uh, vice presidents because they uh, did not uh, de uh, decline their, um, uh, their um, Verkhovna Rada's membership and they did not move on time away from that and they lost, uh, they are working today in, in that um, uh, atmosphere and unfortunately in Ukraine people know about their violations changing from the government from the parliament to government but uh, the laws are not enforced uh, all the time in Ukraine and we believe that we have a legal basis to announce early election but I would not say about early election only about legal basis there are other issues besides um, the letter of law uh, formulate or uh, create the opportunity, uh, the necessity to have early election. We have three uh, issues here. First, Ukraine uh, have uh, Ukraine is going through a deep constitutional crisis. We heard it from the leader of the Party of Region. It, he said clearly that there is a national deep political constitutional crisis. The president of Ukraine stated the same, prime minister of Ukraine stated the same, and in reality we cannot ignore the fact that Ukraine is losing elements of stability every day. And the standoff of two uh, branches of government uh, ruins our healthy investment climate and Ukraine's um, uh, position as a stable partner, trustworthy. And on the other end, uh, deep 
social and economic crisis in Ukraine. It has a lot of components, but people are frustrated, and we see that, and the social problems that are related to high tariff on gas and also absence of compensatory politics, those are the other issues. And the third issue is the uh, dissatisfaction of the government's work by middle and uh, large and small businesses. Those are both our domestic uh, businesses and investors and foreign investors. We have uh, some in restrictions uh, with regard to export, including grain that brought it to the shadows level and some uh, another that exporters are not um, refunded, the taxes, the um, value added taxes are not refunded to exporters. We know about it. Those are well-known facts. In addition to that, we have the revision of ownership in Ukraine, and everybody sees that accelerators today, for the first time, this issue was raised today. And the first time there is a draft of law uh, to uh, prevent raiders. And that is why all of these components lead to the fact that even if the government of Yanukovych will want to be at the power forever, he will not be able to do that, taking into account what is going on in Ukraine today. We don't have, we have limited time. Taras Kuzio and then Ambassador Miller. Um, yes, uh, the, uh, my question is regarding, um, um, could you shed some, shed some light on the, the reasons why um, in the presidential administration and in our Ukraine, there seems to be a situation where the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Uh, and, and I'm saying this in the context of, of, of why this is leading, this inability to sort of have a coherent policy platform with the president is leading to um, a sense of Ukraine fatigue in Washington about President Yushchenko. Um, and I'll give you, uh, and so could you shed some light, light on why that is the case, why Ukraine or the president of Ukraine seems to have a multi-vector domestic policy when he deals with various policies. And particularly related to this, one example is the, the great development that uh, you signed an agreement on the opposition, on a joint opposition with our Ukraine is I think a positive development. But in the same week that this was signed, President Yushchenko signed a decree awarding a medal for his alleged contribution to the rule of law in Ukraine to Mr. Potibenko. Um, you know this individual particularly because he instituted trumped up charges against yourself that led to your imprisonment in 2001. Um, so why would in the same week an agreement be signed with our Ukraine, which the president endorses, and then at the same week he signs a decree promoting Mr. Potibenko? Thank you. As to the uh, fatigue of Ukraine from all these processes, Ukraine can be can feel fatigue from inconsistency in politics, but Ukraine will never feel fatigue to pr protect its independence and its right to be Ukraine. Ukraine get, got never tired of this for the past 100 years. That is why I would like to tell you directly, even if we see some difficulties in democratic camp and maybe some acts are inconsistent, that's why we have our team there with, under my leadership in order to stop all kind of steps to right or left, and, but rather move, keep the course and with one concept and this direction was announced by our forces during presidential campaign. We'd not, we did not just simply sign this agreement on Saturday. This is a program to reform Ukraine. That is our domestic policy, policy and our joint steps with regard to a foreign vector. This joint position, this common position is stated in the program document that was signed. With regard to awards, I believe that awards are fine in any country, and if the president decided to award this person, then he knows why he gave that award, granted that award to him. But at this time, I would not focus on these aspects. I would rather think how 
not to allow to have this multi-vector policy, as you said, because in reality, uh, there was each politics had its own specifics. Kuchma in, uh, had multi-vector politics in all areas, and he, very often in the morning he didn't know what kind of vector he will follow that day, and that sometimes depended upon circumstances, sometimes because of the weather or something else, some other factors affected it. With regard to Viktor Andreevich, Yukshchenko, and myself, I would like to say that in our case, multi-vector is not allowed. We are people of very strict line, and there is no uh, changes or deviation from it. With regard to Viktor Fedorovich, he, he, people are trying to uh, make him look like Kuchma with his multi-vector policies, but nobody uh, is uh, can do it. This is a person with one vector, which is opposition to, which is in opposition to what we are doing today, our team. That is why, in this content today, I would like to say that we put an end to multi-vector situation in Ukraine. The issue is what vector will be chosen by our country and which politician would follow what vector. And I would like to thank the democratic countries of the whole world today who are trying today uh, to to shed a light to our prime minister that there is a multi-vector situation, but I don't know any politician who would be able to explain to Mr. Yanukovych that there is one vector uh, which is directed to Euro-Atlantic integration, to cleaning and reform of domestic life in Ukraine with uh, uh, European standards. That is why we would like to th ask you to take into account that each politician has its own mentality, its own view, its own politics, and take that into account. I know today there is a uh, quite popular uh, view among pol and politicians that Yanukovych and his team, including Akhmeto, those are big businessmen who would not want to go on the auspices of Russia, they will stay independent because they need to be independent in their business. Dear friends, this is a naive position, absolutely naive, because Yanukovych and his team are not free to do to choose anything in this content and protect the business. For example, uh, NAC, uh, in, an, uh, in Aftohas and Minister Oboiko, you know, Minister of Fuel and Energy, you know this name? This is a person who is not accepted either by Yanukovych or Kluyev, uh, but Boyko works anyway, because that's uh, the order he got. We know that the firing of Tarasuk from the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs was absolute confrontation on, on the side of Prime Minister towards uh, President. That was a direct confrontational act. What do you think? Yanukovych, he wanted this confrontation? No. He couldn't make any other decision because he had, uh, he felt a great, great pressure and maybe even wanted to protect their business, but they are not free in uh, following the policy that they can do in Ukraine. Uh, Mrs. Timoshenko, you said in your, your talk that the majority of the Ukrainian people still support the values of the armed revolution. And you just said that uh, the president and you uh, still hold the that's the case and you hold early elections, what outcomes could you predict in the composition of uh, the party as a result of elections? <laughs> in Ukraine, uh, sympathies are not stable and um, regardless, uh, but uh, we believe that Ukraine will elect democratic forces for the third time and the democratic forces, regardless who will 
represent them in the Ukrainian government will be in favor always because nobody can see in Ukraine that there will be a re-emergence of old format. 65% of Ukrainians see European integration, implementation of European values, see Ukrainian, Ukraine to be cleaned of corruption and not allowing to corrupt to and clans to the power in Ukraine, see deep reforms in Ukraine based on transparent, honest, uh, fair procedures. And nobody would be able to convince this part of the society to vote for a different camp. They can stay without guests. They can start use f firewood. They can lose less pennies of their budget. They can be disenchanted by politicians who are in democratic camp, but they will never vote differently because this is on the level of genes, of the level of people's life and their blood, and nobody will convince them otherwise. Yes, in Ukraine, we have 30 percent of people still have who still dream that they would be able to live better in a new form of the form of the Soviet Union. Those are 30 percent. 70 percent do not live that kind of life. That's why all supporters of Yanukovych who have who are there that were uh, they expect and they are uh, waiting for steps. But at the same time, they are disenchanted by uh, illiterate policy of the government with the uh, challenges that have Ukraine today. I am an optimist about democratic forces. Regardless what kind of uh, forces we'll have, they will be uh, they will win. What kind of uh, structure? Probably majority would go for our bloc, probably the same as Nasha uh, Ukraina. I do not exclude the fact that there might be one or two parties of democratic course that can um, overcome that three percent uh, threshold, but we early before the early election we signed the agreement stating that we are together today in opposition but this agreement uh, also predicts all kind of coalition agreement in the future and in the case of early election and in case of uh, for, uh, democratic forces win do you have another do we have time for more questions yeah. Two more questions, and I would like to wrap up. Keep them down and see. Uh, instead of four questions, can you make them two questions? We, you answered somewhat question today. Uh, Party of Region said that they are ready for presidential and parliamentary election in September of this year. Social polling shows that if uh, this kind of election would be there, then Yanukovych can win during this kind of election. Do you see this uh, opportunity to have a parliamentary and presidential election at the same time? If the presidential and parliamentary elections are uh, scheduled, are you going to run for president? With regard to the ideology of your party, you said that party is not of a Western uh, model in, or nevertheless, I'd like to know more about your ideology. I will start with the first question that today, uh, and as I said earlier, the uh, team of Yanukovych stated that they uh, have a draft or submitted to the parliament about having uh, elect parliamentary and presidential election at the same time. This is not a serious conceptual decision that they want to uh, approve. But today, uh, besides the presidential impeachment, there is no other procedure in Constitution that uh, would be applicable for the announcement of early election. President is officially elected, and the election was uh, 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 
was the most honest election. All the legal work was done, and all this judicial system, it went through all the judicial system, and uh, his uh, presidency is legal, and they know that there is no other legal way to announce a new presidential election besides impeachment, but there is no a reason for impeachment. There is no basis for impeachment. Um, that I believe that this kind of statement is the understanding of the party of region that early elections are real and that the Ukrainian society is has accepted it as a better way than the chaos that the unfortunately the parliamentary majority created today. That is just a political statement which doesn't is not supported by legal framework. With regard to our, our party, our party is leftist, and with understanding that the course of Ukraine is only towards European uh, community in the European Union. Based on, uh, well, there is an issue when and how, but we believe that that's the course that our political force will move Ukraine forward. With regard to reforms that uh, Ukraine has to implement today, regardless of the fact that we are in opposition today, regardless of the fact that we have a very complicated situation in Ukraine, our political force uh, submitted several drafts of law uh, bills. Uh, the first, it's a bill about reforms of judicial system in Ukraine. I know that there will never be a very big investment development in Ukraine, uncorrupt um, government in Ukraine, if we are not uh, enforcing the laws. So we attracted, invited uh, experts, and we have a bill that, can, that Ukraine can be proud of today because it addresses all the weaknesses of our uh, legal system today. That is, uh, if this uh, bill will pass, then we will overcome these problems. The second thing that we're trying to do today also to better the investment climate is we are trying to introduce in the parliament today as we introduced uh, the uh, conceptual um, document uh, of protection uh, of the majority investors in Ukraine. Uh, we think that the uh, um, uh, market uh, of uh, action will not work in Ukraine if we don't have the uh, regulations at place. Our bill is already at its uh, first reading in Verkhovna Rada and also was highly appreciated uh, by European experts with regard to the economic topics. Uh, the third project in one month we're going to introduce to the Parliament independently uh, that we are opposition. This is a, a very important project of the pensioners in Ukraine, retired people in Ukraine. Uh, among our other uh, laws, this law will take away all complications, all corruptions, uh, and uh, also the law about the land use, because we're trying to uh, stop the corruption. Oh, this uh, uh, bill about land use is already in its first reading in the parliament. Uh, I don't want to take more of your attention, but I want you to know, for us, whatever we were able to do after the Orange Revolution, first of all, the first um, honest privatization in uh, post-Soviet uh, space is proud that uh, it was able to implement the program to stop the contraband uh, with all the laws that we have accepted practically the contraband the illegal transfer is practically impossible in ukraine now and being in opposition we do not stop even for one day to create all um, a legal basis uh, to continue reforms in ukraine and if ha we have to uh, vote for very important projects in Ukraine. We're going to vote with the power force, with anti-crisis coalition, because even we have this opposition coalition, but it cannot stop Ukraine's movement toward the um, stability in society, reforming uh, the people's life and uh, accession into this WTO and the European Union. I think that we need to cut off the question period and, and allow uh, the Prime Minister to give her summation. Thank you very much. Yeah.
припиняємо питання далі, шановні друзі. Я дякую вам за ваше запитання. Я дякую вам, друзі, за ваші питання, і дякую вам, що ви прийшли до цього мітингу. Але, відповідно на цей факт, що ми говорили з вами про ваші питання, Uh, about the complication challenges of Ukrainian politics that we talked about not very uh, nice uh, things, uh, maybe even of preterm elections, if there is need for it. But um, what happened in Ukraine during the Orange Revolution has uh, some has no return back. Nobody can take it away from us, even if the opposition will be weak and power party will be strong even if um, forces will be eliminated they are ready to support the process uh, of movement ukraine toward this or the other side but you have to know that ukraine has people uh, with very great strength these people understand where ukraine has to be now its place in the society and what to do uh, to progress and if we will do some steps uh, and toward the back uh, we will do in the future some hundreds of steps forwards so nowadays in ukraine we have at least two political forces that have in parliament more than 200 force, uh, voices votes but no political force these forces uh, see foresee the independent ukraine strong ukraine european ukraine and fourthly ukraine that uh, we will be proud in the world and this will be a very difficult way because democracy development, uh, democracy uh, was never uh, easy without struggle. I think in the United States, uh, this democracy has also a difficult way with steps forcing back with some achievements and failures. So that's why I would like you to understand Please do not dismiss Ukraine as something that they will be laid back. Uh, that's not typical for Ukraine. If we have a businessman in this room, please do not lose the hope. Start your businesses in Ukraine. Few more steps and you will see that Ukraine is on, not only the business partner, but as a strong partner. And none of the revanches, the problems will uh, uh, spoil this relationship. And I uh, thank you for support of Ukraine on this way. Thank you. The, uh, the, thank you for a brilliant speech and for answering, frankly, a lot of questions. Normally, prime ministers and former prime ministers evade a lot of questions, and I didn't hear too much evasion there, so I appreciate that.